Hello, everyone. People, people. It's good to see you, art lovers. Are you glad to be here? Yes. Good. Good. My name is Ann Lilla, and I am the executive director of the Anton Art Center. Thank you all for coming. As you tour our exhibit and look at these gorgeous Ian Hornack paintings, I hope that you notice our building as well. It is a 1904 repurposed Carnegie Library, and it became an art center in 1969, thanks to some of the people who are sitting here today. We celebrate our 45th anniversary this year. And when you go upstairs, please make sure that you look at a small collection of Art Center pictures. No matter the medium, fiber, photography, oil painting, computer-aided graphics, or collage, the Art Center shines in those pictures. Please also notice how the 2005 edition melds with the original building. It was possible through generous fundraising efforts by Mount Clemens businessman Gabe Anton and again many of the people who are in this room who helped make the edition possible. The Art Center encourages your participation and support. We will welcome the Detroit Society of Women Painters and the Colored Pencil Society of Michigan into our galleries this fall. Summer art classes for youth and adults include youth ceramics, youth summer camp, teen wheel throwing, teen African drumming, adult watercolor, and adult ceramics. Check the yellow brochures in the racks or our website for more information on the classes. The Art Center also participates in special events like the Art Fair last weekend. Thank you to everyone who made that a success. The Detroit Institute of Arts is sponsoring a free bus from the Art Center to the museum on July 19th. So if any of you are interested, there are flyers in the racks, and it's a, a nice way to go downtown to see the museum and not have to worry about driving or parking. And so I think it leaves from here at 930. And it is one of the um, services that our tax millage, you know, the millage that we the people voted for um, arts, um, it's one of the benefits of that millage. So if you want to get your tax dollars, you know, some value from it, come on aboard. We will also have famous works of art dotting Mount Clemens buildings from July 28th through mid-October through the DIA's Inside Out program. And we're going to have a paint out um, both on our grounds and also at the City Hall. And there are two different paintings there, and so people are going to gather and can um, paint what they see and have some fun together. Our elegant art party fundraiser is Thursday, September 18th, outside under the stars. And there is still time to buy raffle tickets to win a beautiful emerald and ivory scrimshaw necklace. And that was a fundraiser as part of the art fair. And Nancy and Sylvia are our raffle sellers extraordinaire. So you might want to offer to buy some before they get after you. <laughs> Welcome all of you to the Ian Hornack exhibit, a hometown <coughs> retrospective. This exhibit is here because of the generosity of the Ian Hornack Foundation. Eric Hornack Spouts, executive director of the Ian Hornack Foundation and scheduled speaker at this gallery talk, sends his apologies. He was detained in Florida as a result of business. Stephanie Simiot, the exhibition and education manager at the Anton Art Center and co-curator of the exhibit, will give the presentation instead. 
Rosemary Hornack, president of the foundation and sister of the artist and resident of Mount Clemens, she lives on South Wilson. Uh, she was here earlier today and will be coming shortly. This exhibit came about serendipitously. One day last year, I was taking a walk in my neighborhood, as usual. I saw Rosemary, and we spoke, as usual. Except this time, I mentioned that I had just started a new job as the executive director of the Art Center. And she very shyly told me that she was an artist, and we talked a little bit about it. And then she said, but you know, the real artist in my family is my brother Ian. And out came the story of someone who was drawing at age four and painting the masters at age eight. And so the more we discussed it, the more it seemed like we needed to honor someone from this area um, and show our community what he accomplished in his lifetime. And so we do want to thank Rosemary and her son, Eric, for bringing these paintings to us. And now we have Stephanie Simiotz to thank for conducting the gallery talk. Stephanie. Hello. I'm a little soft-spoken, so I'll try to speak up. If you can't hear me, tell me. My name is Stephanie Simiat. I'm the exhibition and education manager here at the Anton Art Center, um, and also co-curator of uh, the show that we're, we're enjoying today. Um, thank you all, first of all, for coming. I'm so happy to see all of you here. So we'll begin, um, we'll begin the talk. So the first slide that you're seeing here, um, this is also the picture that's directly behind you um, and also featured on the postcard. So if this looks familiar, um, that was the one that you saw earlier. So right in. So Ian Horniak, um, born in Philadelphia in 1944. Um, he was an American painter and draftsman and known as one of the original artists of the photorealism and hyperrealism art movements of the 20th century. As you can see, the picture below. This is a picture from the corner gallery right, right directly behind you, the Bull History Gallery. And in that gallery is featured, the picture to your left is his earliest known oil painting. This is known as the Madonna and Child. The landscapes and figures from the early work period convey unique styles said to be influenced by Hornack's interest in Greek mythology and Renaissance artists such as Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, and Michelangelo. A single hand-carved hand sculpture also stands in this gallery. <coughs> the adolescent work. We're sitting in the center gallery, what is known as the center gallery. Um, what was present here earlier today were these three very large <laughs> Uh, movable walls, which are in the gallery. Um, we'll come back to the gallery uh, after we clear the chairs today. But um, in the center gallery is the adolescent work. The center, this center gallery presents a selection of paintings from Hornack's adolescent period. By age 15, Hornack's artwork had progressed from his early Renaissance-inspired approach to a more developed and contemporary style, depicting family members and the landscape of the family farm on 24 Mile Road. A limited number of spiritual paintings were also created during this time. A few surviving paintings of this series were likely influenced by his Roman Catholic upbringing, including the interpretation of Jacob's Ladder from the Book of Genesis. Hornack grew up on his parents' farm in Macomb Township, graduated from New Haven High School, and earned his bachelor's and master's degrees in fine art from Wayne State University, where he also taught for a short time in Detroit before he moved to New York. So what you're seeing here on the screen, um, on the left, is the artist's sister, um, at age, age 11, I believe, and uh, Rosemary Hornex Bounce. 
And the picture adjacent is uh, the Jacob slider. Photorealism. Hornack moved to New York City by 1968, where he found artistic and commercial success working alongside and befriending many of his contemporaries, including artists Lowell Nesbitt, Robert Indiana, Willem de Kooning, Robert Motherwell, Andy Warhol, and Mark Rothwell, Rothko, to name a few. Photorealism, for those of you uh, who have not heard the term before, is a style of painting that flourished in the 1970s, especially in the US, England, and France, often depicting commonplace scenes or ordinary people with meticulously detailed realism with limited evidence of brushwork, alluding to its photographic origin. The painting that we're looking at on screen um, is actually direct, directly across from us. This is called uh, Marcia Sewing Variation Number 4 um, from 1904. Sorry, 1984. Photorealism Landscapes. On the left is Volcano Variation Number 2 from 1971, acrylic on canvas. And to your right, looking toward Oyster Pond, Montauk, 1983. Hornack took in his new surroundings right away by capturing photos of the rural landscapes of Long Island and other locations. He projected these images onto blank canvases and sketched their outlines. Remarkably, Hornack was able to rely his keen photographic memory to complete the painting in exact detail using traditional color and brush techniques after turning off the projector. These literal depictions became known as single exposure landscapes. By the early 1970s, Hornack was experimenting with superimposing up to 25 photographs into a single image. He translated these photographs onto canvas using acrylic paint, creating the large-scale series of multiple exposure la painted landscapes. This challenging technique of layering landscapes into one image creates the illusion of foreign worlds containing multiple horizons, skylines, and light sources. Hornack carefully captured and composed his photographs, often working in dangerous terrain or inclement weather for hours at a time, in order to create the particular desired effects for each painting. Without digital technology available to him in the 1970s, Hornack relied on his expertise to obtain and compose his material in the field, risking the entire composition in the event of a single miscalculation. This image is entitled Childhood of Hephaestus, 1977. This is also acrylic on canvas. This painting is located in the gallery um, in the corner behind the wall. This widely successful series ran from about 1971 to 1984. Of his vision surrounding the multiple exposure landscapes, Hornack once said, quote, my idea of a perfect surrealist painting is one on which every detail is perfectly realistic, yet filled with a dreamlike mood. And the viewer himself can't understand why that mood exists, because there are no dripping watches or grotesque shapes as reference points. That is what I am after. That mood, which is apart from everyday life, the type of mood that one experiences at very special moments." End quote. This painting that you're looking at here is entitled Hannah Tillich's Mirror, Rembrandt's Three Trees Transformed into the Expulsion from Eden from 1978. Hornack often entitled his pieces um, as part of the work, so he would like to tell stories with the titles. The Dark Interlude. Beginning in 1984, Hornack produced a limited series of dark and apocalyptic landscape works. In contrast to Hornack's earlier series of superimposed imagery, these dynamic landscapes extend over the frame, adding a conceptual element to the work. These would be the final landscapes of Hornack's career before transitioning to botanical designs, though he continued to include the frame in most of his floor compositions. 
This piece is titled Ghost at Dawn from 1984, acrylic on panel. By 1986, Hornack had shifted focus from landscapes to several series of botanical, floral, and still life painting for the duration of his career. Hornack primarily used acrylic paint since he moved to New York City, which quickly, quickly dried, emitted minimum odor, and allowed for high productivity. Almost 30 years later in 1996, a different richness in his palette is seen in the botan botanical and still life oil painting series. Ian Hornick did use oil paint as a child in his early works. Um, when he moved to New York City, he transitioned to, to acrylic paint um, because of its availability. Um, later in these series, he transitioned back and used both. Ian Hornack died at the age of 58 in 2002. Soon after his unexpected death, the Ian Hornack Foundation was established to promote and preserve the artist's legacy. His sister, Rosemary Hornack Spouts, currently resides in Mount Clemens. His nephew, Eric Hornack Spouts, serves as the executive director of the or Ian Hornack Foundation. Hornack once stated in an interview of his vision, while I know that the beautiful, the spiritual, and the sublime are today suspect, I have begun to stop resisting the constant urge to deny that beauty has a valid right to exist in contemporary art. The painting we're looking at now is titled Lilies and Mushrooms with My Parrot. This is a detail of the painting that exists upstairs now. Um, the painting that you're seeing in the corner was indeed uh, Ian's parrot. He had several um, several birds over his life, this being one of his favorites. Uh, this painting is also an, an oil on panel. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Stephanie? Well, thank you, yes. This one with the last paintings when he goes to still life, is he mm -hmm. still working from photos, do you know, or, or just from observation? That's a good question. Um, oftentimes he would do both. Um, in the event that he had photographs and um, the still lifes that he wanted to preserve, he would photograph. Um, but oftentimes they were from life. Um, he preferred to, to use both. Thank you.